So when it does pop up, you'll see it in the screen there. Got to be getting close to two minutes now. Not quite dark out yet. Oh, <laughs> did you see it? Notice the new astrophotography mount here in the backyard. It's the Skywatcher EQ6 R Pro. Setting up this mount and taking it out of the box, putting it together, felt uh, very familiar to me because it's a step up from the Skywatcher HEQ5 I've been using for many years. Uh, apparently, Rudy uh, found something in the backyard he didn't like. Anyways, the HEQ5 works fine. Uh, this is, I just needed an upgrade, something to hold some of the heavier telescopes, like the FLT-132 and anything else I happen to use in the future. So this EQ6R is uh, well capable of that with a 44 pound payload. And uh, the SINSPIT, and, and the uh, SINSCAN controller, which I love and I'm very comfortable with. I actually, it was very painless setting up this mount for the first time. I got it polar aligned with the built-in uh, polar scope, which is new and improved. Uh, and the knobs, man, they're so much uh, more substantial now. Uh, it's just a very, very robust and solid mount. Uh, I know that a lot of you guys own the EQ6R. I couldn't believe how many of you actually. Uh, I just posted it on Facebook and uh, I saw about 20 replies of people sending pictures of their theirs in the backyard. Just saying like, oh, great choice, man. So, to be honest, it was a mount that I've wanted for a long time. Uh, it used to be the NEQ6 was, was the mount that I wanted because it was the bigger brother to the HEQ5. And so this is just the latest version of that mount, the EQ6R. The mount was sent to me from Skywatcher after seeing uh, the response from the S3100. So, uh, very thankful to Kevin at Skywatcher. Thanks very much, buddy. And uh, you'll be seeing this mount for quite a while. So you know I had to use the Esprit 100 on the Skywatcher mount. Uh, it actually matches so nicely. It's not important, but it's kind of cool that the green dovetail plate on the bottom of the Esprit 100 matches the green uh, setting circle ring on the EQ6R. I actually appreciated that. I'm certain, I'm, I know there's people that do as well. So as for what I'm doing tonight, I've got two Skywatcher mounts set up, one behind the garage and one in front. The EQ6R is set up on the main patio where I normally set up, and I've got the uh, ASI 294MC Pro one-shot color camera cooled uh, through the Esprit 100 telescope. Uh, that's going through the laptop with auto guiding and the usual routine. Shooting uh, the Veil Nebula, the Western Veil, six, uh, NGC 6992. That's kind of a summer target. It's kind of weird. It feels weird to shoot it uh, with a winter coat on here in uh, mid-October. But it's really high in the sky. It's just about at the meridian right now. Uh, so I'll, I should be able to get to probably about two hours before it starts hitting the, uh, the top of the big maple tree behind me here. Uh, so that's that rig. And then on the other rig, I've got the old uh, Skywatcher HEQ5 still running uh, just fine. Rusty counterweight and all and I'm shooting unguided subs with a DSLR attached of the Andromeda Galaxy. So very short subs, uh, 120 seconds each, two minutes, ISO 400, very, very um, conservative. And uh, yeah, the Andromeda Galaxy, so a broadband uh, color target here in the uh, Bartle Class 8 sky. So a challenging, a challenging task for sure. Uh, I've just been so inspired with some of the stuff I've seen on Astro Bin lately and on cloudy nights. 
of guys shooting in uh, skies as bright as the as mine and capturing targets broadband targets like the Andromeda Galaxy from home using shorter subs and just shooting 100 of them 150 200 and stacking them together and some uh, concentrated effort and processing getting amazing results well I've just set up my uh, little side fun for uh, for the night while the camera's running and uh, I think it's time to check on our first sub of the Veil vale Nebula using the new Skywatcher mount how's that look? <laughs> so that's the ASI 294 with the duo narrowband filter attached through the uh, Skywatcher Esprit 100 this is uh, some solid results so far with this Skywatcher rig pretty happy with this what sub are we on? Uh, looks like we're on, taking the second one now uh, I went with four minute subs because I do see some clouds kind of creeping in from the north that hopefully don't make it here but uh, I wanted to squeeze in a few more subs uh, by shooting some shorter ones just in case something weird happens tonight who knows gonna check out the first sub from my unguided rig with the DSLR ISO 400 two minute shots on the Andromeda Galaxy uh, should be popping up on the screen here very soon and let's have a look when it does so if I can get this focused before it finishes there we go so when it does pop up you'll see it in the screen there got to be getting close to two minutes now not quite dark out yet oh, <laughs> did you see it? I'll just stop it looked like a plane or a satellite went right through it there it is there so this glow in the middle that's the Andromeda Galaxy I wasn't kidding when I said the uh, Veil Nebula was really high in the sky right now. As you can see, I'm getting dangerously close to uh, hitting the legs of the tripod with uh, the camera, so I'll be switching that over. One thing to mention about the, uh, the Skywatcher EQ, EQ6R, and this was mentioned from uh, Kevin at Skywatcher, to be careful with the power supply. I can't use a, a regular AC adapter like I could with, AG, with the HEQ5. Uh, it's a very specific power supply that needs to power them out or you could cause problems. So I'm running the, the native DC uh, power cord that came with the mount into my uh, inverter uh, just to be safe. So the subs I'm looking at uh, on APT right now of the Western Vale Nebula just look absolutely incredible. It's a really cold and clear crisp night. Uh, there was a crescent moon setting. I believe it's just about uh, ready to past the horizon now but uh, yeah very cold it's probably about five degrees out here uh, a little earlier there were some clouds coming in from the north and I could see them you know encroaching and getting closer and then they just seem to be pushed right back uh, into the north again so hopefully they they stay where they are uh, the clear sky chart looked a little uh, like there were some there were some high clouds coming later but uh, so far so good uh, knock on wood so here's what my four minute subs look like on the Western Vale Nebula. Look at it in there, it's just popping like crazy. Um, to get shots, like individual image frames like this from the city is just uh, still, still boggles my mind. I, I suppose I'm getting used to it, which is kind of a weird, weird feeling. The camera's sitting at uh, minus 16 right now. I'm taking, uh, as I said, four minute subs and uh, got the camera set to unity gain. Uh, if you've seen my review of this camera, the ASI 294MC Pro, it's uh, just an excellent camera. Still very much enjoying using it. And uh, yeah, so that's what things are looking like over here. I'm hoping to get, uh, you know, an hour or two on the Veil Nebula, and of course I'll share it at the end of the video. Uh, I consider it kind of a summer target, but uh, it's kind of on its way out, and I'm capturing it uh, before it goes. And then out here I've got the Canon T3i with the Skytech CLS CCD filter, uh, clip-in filter on the uh, Zenith Star 73 APO on the Andromeda Galaxy. So these are short two-minute subs, you heard one just go off, looking good, 
at uh, conservative ISO 400. I'm going to have to delete these subs with this light shining, but um, yeah, so unguided two minute subs on the HEQ5. I can get away with unguided with uh, really great polar alignment, spent my time there. Uh, you know, very, it's a very reliable mount, the HEQ5. And of course, I've got that really wide field of view on the Z73 at 430 millimeters. So, you know, very forgiving. And uh, looking at these two minute preview subs, the stars look sharp. I'm sure I'll have to dump one out of every four or five, but uh, I could get, you know, a few hours on the Andromeda Galaxy here from home. Very curious to see how this one turns out, if it's possible to get something I'm satisfied with. Uh, the version I have before had a lot of data from dark skies, because it is a broadband target. But uh, so I'm very curious to see how well this works. Uh, the plan is to just pile on the exposure time as, usu as, as usual. What a concept. This is my least favorite enemy in the entire game. They don't stop moving. And they're hard to kill. This is insanity. So I had a heart attack. You know how quiet it is? It's a high-pitched hum. A little quieter than the HEQ5. Similar sound. Kind of does this different sound uh, near the end, right before it stops. Kind of freaked me out at first. There we go. So that's where the veil is now. No, it really was a huge upgrade uh, going from the HEQ5 to this mount. Uh, the CEM60 obviously was amazing, uh, very robust mount, but it was just totally, it, the CEM60 was totally different. Whereas this Skywatcher, it's just the new and improved version of my, my old mount I've been using since 2014. And uh, it's just, man, it's, it feels so good to just use the newest, improved version of a mount you've been using for so long. Like the SinScan controller is upgraded. Uh, everything about it is just, man, this is, a, I'm having a great time with this mount. And the best part about it is because it shares so many similarities, I was able to just get up and running right away because I know exactly what to expect and what I'm doing with it. So here it is here. Uh, maybe you can see how hefty these knobs are. Like polar aligning was so much better with this one. But uh, I've done the meridian flip. I've uh, recalibrated my auto guiding. I'm just going to uh, start my image sequence here on the other side of the meridian on uh, the Veil Nebula. And we are off to the races. Ooh. Oh, I was going to say, I think some clouds are coming in, but it's this light shining into the guide scope. It's all cloudy. I'm pretty happy with the way everything uh, is going tonight. Uh, normally you don't get nights like this where everything goes a little too well. Uh, things happen quickly, polar alignment, star alignment, everything just happened real nicely. Even the clouds starting to come in and going away. Uh, I've got a bit of luck on my side tonight. Um, and. Being the first time I'm setting up the EQ6R, uh, it, it makes it even rarer. It should have been cloudy tonight because I got a new piece of gear. That's normally the way it goes. Uh, but yeah, so two Skywatcher mounts running right now. Uh, I'm hoping to get a decent uh, shot of Andromeda uh, through the Z73 and the, my Canon T3i. So the filter is the, uh, the Skytech CLS CCD, uh, which does cut out a lot of uh, artificial light here in the city but it also kind of skews the data and it turns it kind of red and you lose some of the natural star color and blues. So a broadband uh, galaxy target like Andromeda is a tall order from the city. So I'm kind of curious to see if I'll actually end up with a usable image. 
Uh, it might take a lot of processing, so if this, this video is delayed uh, like a day or two, it's because I've spent all that time, uh, tomorrow being Sunday, processing that uh, Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, on the other side of the garage, the, uh, the Veil Nebula images, the Western Veil, with the, uh, the Esprit 100 and the ASI 294, that looks a lot more straightforward. I got pretty good at uh, processing those images through uh, the Duo Narrowband filter. Uh, they just, it's just so great and then of course they're, they're cooled down to nine, minus 16 degrees so uh, I won't have to deal with a lot of noise. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully get a few hours on both targets. I'll share them both at the end of the video. Uh, I apologize if I was just kind of gushing over uh, new equipment in this video. Uh, normally it's more about uh, the actual hobby itself of astrophotography, but I feel a little bit like a kid in a candy store today. Got really excited, really enjoying the uh, Skywatcher mount. So thank you very much to uh, Kevin at Skywatcher for that. Uh, I will get a lot of use out of this uh, EQ6R and uh, I know there's a lot of other happy owners of uh, that exact telescope mount. I'm surprised to hear how many of you own this mount. It feels like winter's here already. You got the winter coat on. Uh, some of the winter targets are coming up. Orion will be out uh, in about an hour or two tonight. So maybe I'll hop on over to that depending on how things go. But at this point, uh, I'm not uh, asking for anything else. It's just been an unbelievable night. So thank you guys so much for coming along as always on this journey in the backyard. And uh, I really appreciate you watching and all your wonderful comments and of course subscribing. Until next time, clear skies.